Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Uh, right in this video I'm going to show you the camera supports that I use. Um, I have quite a few so um, hopefully I've got a nice variation that might give you some ideas. So if you do have your own YouTube channel and you're currently uh, hand holding your stuff uh, which is what I'm doing at the moment then hopefully this video is going to be useful to you uh, because there's nothing better than having a steady camera. Now there is something you can do um, if you're um, hand holding anyway, um, just to improve the, the shakiness as such. Uh, we're not talking about obviously editing software here, we're talking about in camera. But uh, at the moment I'm holding my camera with one hand. Now potentially when you hold it with two hands, you will be able to hold it slightly steadier. And indeed if you manage to uh, tuck your elbows to your body, you can even hold it a little bit steadier. Having said that probably doesn't really work because you're going to need one hand probably holding your models and stuff uh, for when you're doing your videos. So what you really really need is a tripod. Uh, now with a tripod you obviously get um, a nice still um, image and that is a hundred percent nicer to look at. Um, now Obviously, it depends on what camera you're using. So there's there's basically four cameras. Uh, there's a mobile phone camera. Uh, there's a compact camera, or like an action camera, i.e. A, a small ca proper camera. Uh, then you have the SLR camera, stroke mirrorless camera, which is what I'm using, an SLR. And then, of course, you have the video camera. Now, I'd say the video camera, SLR cameras come into the same category. So you're looking at mobile phones, compacts. Um, I'm just going to, in this case, just say SLRs. So uh, in terms of mobile phones, I don't use a mobile phone. Now, if you go into um, a good camera shop or into a mobile phone shop that sells, sells accessories, you can buy a mobile phone holder which has a tripod thread in it. And then you can attach it to any of these tripods that I'm going to show you. Um, and that's a, a, a good um, investment to make. Now there are different qualities of those, depending how much money you spend. Um, but one of the things that I would advise you look for is one of the adapters which lets you do both horizontal and vertical recording. Um, because you don't want to be stuck on one of those planes. Um, so that, that's basically this for mobile phones. So let's have a look at compact cameras. Um, and we're going to go right to the basics. Uh, and let's just uh, go down to my table. Hopefully it's about the right area. Okay. First thing is a box. Any box. I mean, I've got a plastic tub here. Um, but literally you can use any box at all um, and put your camera on there and rest it into position. Um, now ob obviously it means you can't angle your camera very well so you'll have to have different sized boxes um, but it's going to be a lot better than say having your camera actually on the table um, because obviously the angle is, is going to be way off. So if you want to raise your camera off of the table maintaining it uh, as a steady camera then that's a good start and of course we've all got boxes at home it's going to cost you nothing so that would be step one of course that that will work with pretty much any camera step two is a bean bag this is basically just a bag filled with polystyrene balls I have two here actually um, now if I, I use these one on top of each other if I need to get a little bit more height um, but your camera works quite well on there um, they're also quite good doubling up as little rests for your hands for when you're painting so bean bags potentially is another option okay next is going to be what is commonly known as a bendy tripod now this is a very very basic bendy tripod this is priced at about five pound uh, it has the standard quarter inch tripod thread which all cameras have on the top um, and the legs themselves just bend so you can get varying heights and indeed varying angles now, obviously this is only designed for little lightweight cameras or possibly mobile phones um, but like a little compact camera would be absolutely fine on one of these little bendy tripods and the investment isn't actually that much so that could potentially be an option if you're just using a compact and there's various versions of those available 
Um, there's a slightly more expensive one. Uh, this is made by a company called uh, uh, Jobo, or uh, sorry, Jobby, um, and. Again, it's got the standard quarter inch uh, thread on the top there and the legs on these are a bit more substantial and they are a lot more bendy. So this one you can actually wrap around things if you want to and get nice different angles. Not only that, this particular one is magnetic. Uh, I haven't got anything here to demonstrate that, but basically, yeah, those feet are magnetic, which is quite useful if you do happen to have a metal object you can sort of magnetise it onto. Um, and these sell for um, about £13, so that potentially is another option. Going up to, to uh, the next stage, I'm going to have to stop the camera because I'm using one of the tripods, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so the next stage um, is for still for compact cameras, but a much more advanced tabletop tripod. Now this is the Manfrotto Pixie. Uh, it sells for about twenty-five pound. Um, it has a very nice ball and socket head on the top. So what you can do is release. So you push this in, and then this rotates round, uh, which is really useful because uh, and then you can change the angle and you can just do this um, as you're recording, and it's nice and sturdy, it's really really great tripod. The only thing that I found that this doesn't do is it doesn't go really really low, um, so it's sort of fixed in this position, but apart from that I had some um, grill success with this tripod, um, and to be fair the only reason why I changed from this tripod to my current equipment is because I went up to the SLR, a bigger camera, and the ball and socket joint isn't quite man enough uh, for the SLR. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my SLR off of the tripod I'm currently using um, and show you that one. Right, okay, so this is the tripod that I'm currently using on my SLR. Uh, this is the bigger version of what I just showed you, basically. So this is the Manfrotto Pixie Evo. Um, it's much more sturdier. It has a bigger ball and socket head. And rather than using the quick release where you push this in to make this move, it actually has a physical lock to uh, lock it into position. It's not quite as convenient to operate, but it definitely does the job. Um, and not only that, uh, to screw the thread in, it has its own little winder, so it's a lot easier to put the camera on. Um, it also has the ability, if you push this switch over, to go down much lower which was what my other tripod didn't do. Not only that, it has legs that extend, uh, which really, really helps me. Let me just put this back into the other position. It really helps me when I have my camera up on the top and my video light is actually quite top heavy. So when I go forward like this, it tends to, to go forward. But what I'm able to do is extend the two front legs um, and that balances that forward motion out quite nicely. So this tripod is absolutely fantastic. It of course is more expensive. This is about £45 this tripod, but I definitely would recommend it if you want a good quality tabletop tripod. Um, okay, so more, we have more. Right, another option for SLRs is this. Now this is a bigger version, if I can guess it, and I'm gonna have to go by hand. So this is a bigger version um, of what the small little gorilla like magnetic pod that I showed you. This is an SLR one. Now this um, is about 40 pound to buy and you can buy it with or without a head. If you buy it with a little ball and socket head, it sells about £80. Um, and I do use this occasionally for things like my uh, lights, etc. Um, because the great thing about this is it literally bends right the way round. So you can actually support this, for example, say on the back of a chair and stuff like that. So it's actually a really useful tripod if you're in awkward areas. Um, and that's exactly what I did when I recorded my um, Star Trek Attack Wing battle reports. I had my lights on this uh, wrapped around the chair and then I had my camera on a different tripod. Um, and it sort of just worked quite well. Um, but yeah, this is the Gorilla Pod. Uh, they do various versions. They do like a small one uh, for the like, really baby one, like that man, uh, magnetic one. They do a slightly bigger one, which sells for about £20, which is good for compacts, but not good for SLRs. If you want to go for SLR one, uh, then this one is actually pretty good. The only thing that I don't like about it, and the reason why I went for that P50 
pixie tripod um, is because it is more difficult to get this into the correct um, sort of horizontal uh, lines. Now even though I do have a grid on my camera so I can work out the horizon as such and um, it still is a lot more trickier with this and I don't have the head on mine either um, so if you want to angle your camera forward again it's more trickier without the head so you ideally would need a head for that but then that's 80 pound it's roughly twice the price as my pixie evo that I'm currently using okay so that's all of my tabletop tripods um, of course, I do most of my recording on the tabletop, but that doesn't necessarily be, you know, it's not necessarily always the case, um, and it may not be the case for you. So, potentially another option is just literally a bigger tripod. Now, um, I don't own a big tripod. I do own this one, which is um, a, tri a tripod that has like a telescopic function. So it does go to a reasonable height. Um, it's not the most sturdiest of tripods um, at the big height, but it does mean for the very, very small occasions that I use it. Now, if you are going to go for a floor standing tripod, um, A, obviously you need to make sure you get the right height, um, and B, highly recommend a video head for it. Don't get a ball and socket head um, or a pan and tilt head. Get a video head that is... Um, uh, has like a fluid head as it's called so when you release it and you move it it moves really really smooth now then obviously not exactly cheap uh, I would su suggest they start at about 50 pounds for a tripod which goes up to a reasonable height with a fluid head and of course you can spend as much as you want to on a tripod I mean some of the Gitso tripods you know they go up to 500 pounds just for the the legs and then you've got to buy your head separately but you know we're talking about in the reasonable level I would say between 50 and 70 pounds for a video tripod you can buy just standard camera tripods for about 30 to 50 pounds they don't tend to have the video head on um, and I would highly recommend the video head especially if you're going to be moving uh, your uh, camera around on the tripod. So that is that. One last thing, another option. And now this is something that I use for my battle reports. And that is, let's move that out of the way. I've got tripods everywhere. It's like the day of the triffids. Right. A monopod. Now this is a single stick. Now obviously this does extend, it extends to about five and a half feet, something like that. And I have a monopod head on, which means that I can tilt the footage forward. So um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the camera up um, on there so you can see it in action. Right, so there you go, I'm on the monopod. Um, and I have the head tilting forward. I've got the head loose. And that's how I do my battle reports. It gives me the ability to move my camera whenever I want. If I want to move it physically, say, around the table, I can literally lift up the camera. I can move it like so. You can see my microphone there. Um, and then I'm, I'm ready to go. So I still, of course, have a bit of movement, which is, you know, that's going to happen. But on the whole, that is a lot sturdier than if I was hand-holding um, the, the camera and really, really useful for when I do my battle reports. It gives me the movement around the table, and now enabling me to zoom in, etc., on the table, um, and just maintains a little bit more steadiness, so you don't get that sort of, like, effect, you know, like this. Um, it really, really does help maintain the stability. Okay, so, um, that's it, I've exhausted all of the tripods and stands that I use or have used in the past. Um, I really hope there's something in there that was useful. Um, if you have any questions, then please um, feel free to put uh, a, a question in the comments box below and I'll see if I can answer them for you. Okay, so that's it from me. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video.